Hello, this is Linda Betris Nichols, and do I have an amazing woman to introduce to you, Jenny Langren. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much, Linda. It's great to be here. Good to have you. Okay, so we're talking about choosing unity, and yeah. so if you're going to choose unity, you get to choose. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. You get to choose love and unity and hope. So get us started, Jenny. When you see the word choose, and we're kind of talking about like the idea of unity. Um, yeah, what comes up? Well, what comes up for me is that we get to step into choice. Mm, nice. Sometimes when we're in a relationship with someone and there's friction <laughs> or disturbance, we tend to get very focused on what the other person is doing, you know, what they, how they are acting or behaving. Yeah. And when we are in that sphere of other people and other people's actions and choices, we're really giving our power away because mm -hmm. we don't have any power there. And we can even sense it when we're there in our minds that we just feel weak. So choosing love to start is about getting back into our own bodies, right? Yeah. And recognizing the power of influence that we do have making our own decisions and understanding that my actions are not based on being a reflection of how the other person is behaving. Nice. It gets to be a reflection of who I am and who I choose to be. It's part of our own growth. And I'm telling you, Linda, firsthand that sometimes loving a person means letting them go. Yeah. And loving doesn't always look that loving is one of your quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially not to other people. We can own that love and recognize it for what it is and just allow people to have their own opinions. Mm -hmm. It's none of our business. Yep. And it reminds me of like, um, you know, having a festering wound and like literally needing it cut open more so it can, you know, drain or whatever and and that doesn't seem very loving to take a knife to someone who's already in pain right yeah Just put a band-aid on it it'll you know it'll be good <laughs> yeah they kiss the boo-boo <laughs> I was like you yeah, know yeah mothering can feel that way too that didn't yeah. feel very loving um yeah yeah call somewhere uh, yeah and move the child way further down the road positively than anything else we could have done Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. loving can be about letting go yeah. and just allowing people to play their leading role in their own lives yep to learn from natural consequences mm -hmm. to uh, hold that space for them and love them on a distance while they get to explore their own tools right uh, of emotional intelligence and understanding for their their own being and their own journey and uh, and that's, I mean, I'm just thinking of this, this little tree that I may keep on my window seal, you know, protected, <laughs> safe <laughs> from the wind and the rain and the sun. And it's just going to grow to get pretty weak compared to that great oak tree that's out there, you know, dealing with reality. Wow. So thinking about love, I come back to the fact that I get to allow people to root themselves as that tree in the reality that is and mm -hmm. and be honest with them and right. own my own you know decisions and be truthful to who I am so yeah. that they get to root themselves in what truly truly is I love and, that um, rooted too, yeah. Jenny. yeah and uh, I think that's actually a big part about leadership when we speak about leadership, many times we think about the importance of having a vision as a leader to be able to, you know, stick our head above the clouds and see what other people are not yet seeing and inspiring them and, and you know, enabling them to believe in yeah. what is to be. That's the vision. And leadership is also about being rooted in reality in how people are truly behaving and acting and what's really going on in our circumstances. Yes. And that's loving on them. And it's tough love at some times. Sometimes. Um, sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And remembering that they can't see what you are seeing too, right? Very true. It's part of the vision. Yeah. Yeah. So bringing vision into reality is, you know, that's the tough job of leadership. And that's when leadership um, feels lonely and yeah. why it's so important to connect with other leaders who are in that same reality themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how do you bring it home? You know, how do yeah. you get them to get it? And even in coaching, um, you know, I was like, don't be too far ahead of people, you know, like even yeah. a couple steps, which you know, people go, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't teach that. I don't know mm -hmm. enough. And it's like, you probably know way too much. <laughs> but just yeah. staying just two steps ahead of somebody, that's always been the, the best coaching um, experience for me is having a coach that's just been through those trenches and mm -hmm. um, they really can get in touch with where you're at emotionally or whatever who they just jump through they really know how to get you through it faster so that's been super cool yeah yeah and it helps to really care for that person because <laughs> when we get stuck in and just showing off of prestige or you know look at me when we're in that part of our, our ego then that's um it's just disconnecting. And uh, when we get down to just being curious and caring for that other person, um, it just gets really easy to, to meet them where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. And it brings us right back to unity. <laughs> so yeah, we choose yeah. to be that way. Oh, we're yeah. at unity again. Mm -hmm. And we're to me, at, that's yeah. unity without uniformity too. Like we don't all have to be alike. It's seeing the differences in each other and your wonderful, where do I end and where do you begin kind of thinking. Exactly. It's, it's recognizing the fact that, uh, as I've said in recently, like the, the fact that we're all unique and that we're all special and different and uh, um, kind of messy at times is something that we all have in common. So if I really tried to, um, you know, look like everybody else, um, I'm just not gonna be honest to my purpose here at this earth. And, um, oh, Linda, I am getting so distracted. Can we pause purpose? That? Well, purpose, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, what is purpose? Purpose is us, <laughs> right? We yeah. get taught like, oh, you're gonna go find your purpose. And it's a very masculine thing because, you know, men being in touch with their mission, you know, that's super important. And hmm. we get down to the nuts and bolts of purpose, we are our purpose. Does that we make are. sense? And yeah, yeah, it does make sense. And that's why yeah. So you're okay, no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. brings it back to living in the now, right? Yeah. We're not guaranteed yeah. another minute on this planet, not mm -hmm. a minute. So mm -hmm. yeah, right now it's the most important. And mm -hmm. in the now, um, you know, there's nothing to worry about because the, that's in the future. You know, if it's not happening right now, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> that doesn't mean you don't act on it, you know? So, yeah. Okay. And then hope. Um, that has a flip to it. Uh, you can hope you're going to get rescued or you can, you know, set up the flares or make the sticks into the word help on the beach or, you know, like go into action right so mm -hmm. hope can be a lack word it and can. hope can be a very hopeful word <laughs> like yeah. i i hope right um hope in action though keeps it out of lack and when i say action even just pausing and sitting around doing nothing it's that's still an action right so yeah, it's a choice that we step into for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's just holding space for an outcome. Yeah. You know, whether we're led to take an action on it or not, we're still holding space for that outcome instead of like, well, I hope mm -hmm. it happens. Like, mm -hmm. no, then you're out of your power and you're in lack. Yeah, yeah. 
So hope and trust uh, are very interesting words to to look at here. Like I can, hope can be a lack word and it can be just an inspiration of, you know, I trust yeah. that uh, this is going to work out for mm -hmm. the better. I trust the process. Right. I trust that I'm learning through this and that I'm growing through this. And, and um, the whole journey of going from maintaining external control of things to feel safe, to experience security and moving inward as a leader, for sure, to understand that you get that find a sense, you get to find that sense of security within an internal trust yeah. <laughs> and hope. And um, it, that's, to me, that's been such a great shift in my journey of transformation to be able to allow life to develop and uh, to allow that river to just flow beautifully <laughs> mm -hmm. and take das day as it is and, mm -hmm. and cherish it. Yeah. And um, recognize the, just the teachings and the opportunity that I have to connect with the people that I meet because it just comes right. back to the people that I serve. Yeah. And it takes me to the idea of emotions. And like, I love your mm -hmm. river analogy. Uh, my mom always says, you know, this too shall pass, right? So emotions, they're going to be there in the moment and they may mm -hmm. feel like they're lasting forever. Um, they pass. They, they do, do pass. Yeah. And you feel different. Sometimes not in the very next morning. And I guess it, I guess <laughs> the idea of if you've been through you know, the death of someone, um, you, you go from, well, there's the denial and, you know, there's all those stages of grief. Um, there is a stage where you're just super raw and you think that they're like, that's never going to change. Or you're like, you don't want to feel that way and you want it to change and you just like fight against the raw. And then can get into trauma responses of making sure you never feel mm -hmm. that way again you know yeah that's heavy stuff and to recognize that we're we're all going through that heavy stuff we all have our own triggers um we can understand each other's behavior a lot better as well and that yeah. gives us hope as humanity to actually get along in this world people yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, Jay? <clears throat> exactly and part of that is recognizing that our emotions really serve us you know they're message Messenger. they they yes I like to speak of them as my friend mm -hmm. like even anger knocking on that door is a friend of mine that wants to teach me about what is important to me mm -hmm. and uh that this is again back to acceptance and recognizing that all parts of me you know, are a discovery. They're part of the discovery. Right. So I get to, you know, instead of pushing that down or walking around or, you know, keeping that out, uh, I'm able to welcome it in and uh, listen to the teaching. Uh, what is this teaching me? And again, back to just the relationship to with my children. Yeah. Um, they're going through it as well. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that whatever's coming up is allowed and let's listen, let's get curious. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, ask what this is teaching us. I love it. Thank you so much, Jenny. It's always such a pleasure to chat with you. I'm meeting you, Linda. So good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.